This video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. From the first moment I booted up Crucible, I was like, holy shit, this is Anthem, but with PvP. It looks like Anthem, with lush avatar-inspired vegetation punctuated with bioluminescence and weird creatures and abandoned technological relics. It sounds like Anthem, with basically no soundscape at all and just this very eerie silence everywhere you go. Its movement mechanics feel like Anthem, as all the heroes are extremely versatile with jump jets and teleports and rocket zip lines and more. The shooting feels like Anthem, in that its weapons feel really weak and lack satisfying handling mechanics. Melee was near identical to Anthem, in that it doesn't provide proper feedback when you hit a target. I could go on, but the long and the short of it is that if Bioware were to design some sort of PvP for their game, I am 90% certain it would look and feel almost exactly like Crucible. But the most glaring similarities between Crucible and Anthem is that both of them suffered from deep identity crises, and both of them were released well, well before they should have been. Crucible does not boldly declare what it's trying to be, hedging its bets across multiple game modes in an awkward compromise that never manages to deliver. And Crucible's launch state is laughably bad, with horrendous netcode, wildly imbalanced heroes, and obvious design issues that should have been identified and fixed well before the public release of this game. Like Anthem, Crucible feels like a feature incomplete public alpha test, and it's a damn shame because I would really like for a game like this to succeed. With the death of Paragon and Battleborn and Gigantic, there's a gap in the market for a game like this. A third-person, MOBA-inspired hero brawler that asks us to master specific class kits while balancing PvE objectives against PvP action. I like this sort of stuff a lot, and it would make me genuinely happy if Crucible would blow up and become a success on the scale of Apex Legends or PUBG or whatever else. But right now, that feels like an absolutely impossible dream. This game released less than two weeks ago, and because the marketing was so non-existent, most of you who are clicking on this video still probably haven't even heard of it. It's nowhere to be seen on Twitch, except when sponsored streams are going. At the time of writing, the game has 540 viewers across all channels, and it's not even two weeks old. Steam charts tell the tale of a muted launch with a rapidly declining player base. As I've gone through the review process, I found it harder and harder harder to find matches as the population continues to wane. So, how did we get here? How does Amazon Studios' first major game, a free-to-play MOBA-esque hero brawler, launch without causing so much as a ripple in the still waters that was the month of May 2020? Let me show you why Crucible should have been left in the oven for at least another six to nine months. Crucible is a difficult game to put a label on. A lot of people are saying it's a MOBA, and I think that's useful as a guide, but it does give the wrong impression overall, since Crucible's third-person action focus makes it feel like quite a different beast. Some people have likened it to Destiny's Gambit PvEVP game mode, and this is straight up not true since it lacks the collect and deposit rhythm that is core to Gambit, and the class-based hero-centric design pushes it into very different territory. It's also not like Gigantic or Paragon or Small might or anything else really, it's kind of just its own thing, so what is it? Well the first thing we need to explain is that right now, not even the developers know what Crucible wants to be. The game launched with three vastly different game modes to choose from, and absolutely none of them work well at this point. The first and arguably core game mode is Heart of the Hive. It's 4v4 and you're farming for experience while waiting for hives to spawn, which you're trying to destroy so you can capture their hearts before the enemy team does. This feels the most MOBA-esque since it's smaller team sizes, and it really shoves players towards specific objective spots on the map to force team fights. The second game mode is Harvest Command, which is essentially control or capture the point. There are five harvesters on the map. You can cap them to rack up points. Whoever hits the required score first wins. The big thing about this game mode is that it's 8v8, making the entire thing feel far more action-y. The final mode is Alpha Hunters, which is a 16-player, duos-only battle royale. You get randomly matched with a partner, and you fight to be the last team standing 
understanding. It's absolutely ridiculous that this game mode was included at launch, but I'll explain why later. As you can probably tell from this overview, Crucible is too afraid to commit to a single vision of itself. 4v4 strategic focus map control, 8v8 large scale PvP mayhem, 2v2 small scale no respawn battle royale. All of these are so different from one another that it would be completely impossible to simultaneously develop character kit design, character kit balance, objective design, map design, and rewards economies without screwing it all up at once. And that's exactly what they did. They screwed it all up. And as a result, each of these game modes has numerous critical design flaws that fatally wound them. Heart of the Hives is undone by the sheer size of Crucible's map. In between hive spawns, players are running around and capping harvesters and farming mobs for experience. The map is so large that you basically never run into an enemy unless it's objective time. There are huge spans of three or four or five minutes plus where you just never see the enemy because they're at the opposite end of the map. Things get even worse when you take respawn timers into consideration. Holy shit, these timers. When you die, you are out for 25 seconds. You then need to select a drop point and the game is designed in such a way that there are never any drop points near the currently active hive. Then you need to sit through this annoying drop animation. Then you need to wait for your character to become active since they sort of lag out when you drop. Then you have to run back to the objective. On average, when you die, you are sitting around for a minimum of like a minute and a half to two minutes. Just doing absolutely nothing. It is so boring and so frustrating. Harvest Command is actually the best feeling game mode at the moment because it sort of solves the map issues just by dumping more people on the map. There's eight more people there, so there's more stuff going on. With more people comes less downtime, so things are at least more fun more often. The problem is that it all just becomes kind of mindless. This is a game that is clearly trying to lean into the hero design to facilitate strategic cooperation, but all that gets thrown out the window when there are 16 people in one place. You can't balance health and damage output and CC timers and all that stuff when there are literally twice as many people shooting at a target. Everything sort of breaks down into chaos. The worst game mode is the Battle Royale mode. Oh, holy sh- I, I can't believe they chose to include this. Just imagine the same oversized map, only it's now 16 players in 8 groups of 2, and there's no respawn when someone dies, and that's it. That's the game mode. There are no like lootable weapons or armor upgrades, no tools you can use, no strategic positions to capture. You just kill each other and then you go back to the menu. And heroes are so unbalanced at the moment that there's only like three or four viable heroes you can bring in and the rest are just utterly pointless. Across all three game modes, you are matched randomly with other players. So you select a hero and then you queue for a game and then the queue pops and you're matched with other players who have already chosen their heroes. There's no way to intelligently build a team composition in Crucible because the matchmaking system just completely skips that step. And as such, I've been dropped into some laughably bad team compositions with absolutely no way to change that outcome. By the way, if anyone leaves, they don't get replaced. So it's basically like GG. Uh, in addition to this, there's no voice chat, uh, there's not even a text box. This is a game that is entirely dependent on working together with your team, but you have no way of communicating with them other than a very clunky and ineffective pinging system. It blows my mind that they could have chosen to launch a game like this without these basic communication tools. Another thing that all game modes share is just how pointless, ineffective, and unsatisfying the PvE farming feels. You capture harvesters which passively earn you experience, but the earn rates are so slow and incremental that you never feel the benefit of holding multiple harvesters. You farm the same one PvE enemy over and over again, and they're so dull to fight. They just slowly walk towards you while you burn them down. If part of your game is going to be PvE, then you need to make that portion of the game compelling. Right now, in Crucible, it absolutely is not. So this is a savaging of these game modes, but I'm not exaggerating when I say I could go for another 30 minutes talking about all the problems with these maps, these modes, and the objective design. There's just so much here that is awful, and it's awful because, as I said, the developers did not commit to a single vision for this game. This game should have one game mode at the start. Everything should be built around that. Make everything pop. Make that game mode sing. Build your summoner's rift and then go and build your ARAMs or your ultra rapid fires or whatever. This scattergun hedged approach has no chance of succeeding. Hero, shooter, brawler, MOBA, whatever's very much rely on their rosters being engaging, fun, and balanced. 
Crucible gets some of this right, but nowhere near enough. Crucible's current roster of heroes definitely brings some originality to the table. Yeah, you've got your Mendoza, who's just like Soldier 76, but with a Latino name. But most of the other heroes have a unique design and a unique kit that you probably haven't seen before. Summer is a flame-throwing aerial ballerina. Rahi and Brother are a duo who use shields both offensively and defensively. Bug is a little robot who drops plants on the ground and then waters them so they zap nearby enemies. And Cezanne is a mercenary who can only reload her weapons when she switches her weapons, requiring some serious forward thinking when you choose to engage a target. Visually, the characters all look pretty great, but then you click on them and you hear their voice lines. Is this a click of friendship? Will you be my friend? I am so glad to have a friend. Most people are so basic. But that's nothing a little acid can't solve. I think the developers are going for some sort of subverted expectation shtick where they're like, oh, you know how all these characters always have these over the top personalities? What if they had no personality at all? These voice lines are so bad, so bland, and so mismatched that they seem to suck the life out of each character. Like, look at Earl. Look at how badass this guy is. Now listen to him speak. I'll tell you my secret to great parenting though. Dad jokes. Yep, dad jokes. Honestly, throw out all the voice work that's been done, start again. These character designs are actually pretty good, but they will never find loyal stands with voice work like this. Coming back to the character kits, I think what I enjoyed most about Crucible was how innovative and fun some of these kits were. I like that Mendoza could drop a little dugout anywhere on the battlefield. I like that Ajona, Iona, I'm not sure how to say that. She has this sort of like Spider-Man swing thing that she can use. I like that Tosca has a dot based weapon forcing you to think about pressuring an enemy rather than just dropping them on the spot. I like that Shakiri can drop a huge dome over her, trapping more mobile enemies and projecting the objective while you're capturing. At first, it took me some time to discover the value behind a lot of these moves, but over time I came to the realization that this is some really strong kit design. Bleeding Edge recently released and its heroes felt disappointing because their kits were kind of one dimensional and didn't really facilitate outplay. Crucible gets this right and I enjoyed seeing myself improve as I came to understand these kits more deeply. The learning had a hard ceiling though, and that hard ceiling was balance. Half the roster in this game is like a League of Legends champion when it first launches, when Riot purposefully overtunes them so that everyone has to buy them, and the other half of the roster is like the same heroes, but two months later when Raido nerfs them into the ground. These kits are interesting and well designed, but some of them are so absurdly powerful that it is ridiculous. Like Tosca has this blink, for example, that she can use almost any time she wants that ports her over a huge distance. She can teleport through structures. If you ever manage to catch her, which you won't by the way, but if you do, she can drop a smoke cloud to become basically invisible. And then she can use X-ray goggles so that she can see you, but you can't see her. Oh, and later on, you upgrade your teleport so that it leaves a bomb behind you that blinds other players. Like imagine fighting against that in a 2v2 battle royale scenario when you're using some random tank person that has almost no maneuverability. You just get absolutely shrecked by this character. Again, I could talk for 30 minutes or more about balance issues in this game, but I won't. Many will argue that it's unfair to criticize this game for these issues given how new it is, and of course it's going to need some time to arrive at ideal balance. I would agree with this, except for the fact that this game has been officially released. This isn't an alpha, this isn't a beta, this isn't early access, this game is out. Amazon put their name to this and said, yep, that's finished, go and play it. It is absolutely nowhere near finished, and the current state of class balance is just one of many indicators. When I reviewed Anthem, I tried to make the point that what was wrong with Anthem wasn't just the loot or the bugs or whatever. The basic combat systems weren't good. Weapon design, hit registration, enemy design and AI, melee animations, melee hit registrations. These are very, very difficult issues to solve because they are hard baked into the game's engine. Unfortunately, Crucible is in the exact same boat in this regard. If you play Crucible, the first thing you'll experience is this sort of jitteriness to everything. It's in the way the characters move and bounce around. It doesn't look smooth, it doesn't feel smooth. It's like the server is struggling up to keep with the in-game models and there's this sort of desync and it makes everything feel really light and floaty and detached and unsatisfying. Melee is perhaps the worst example. There are just no melee hit registrations. Like, 
at all. You swing your weapon and you don't know if you're hitting the target unless you see their health going down. It's awful and everything just feels so slow. Even when you're moving fast, it somehow manages to feel slow. I don't know how they did this, but they did this. Listen, this game should not have been released now. I had moments where I enjoyed this game, for sure. Brief flashes of what could be. I'm actually on board with this as a concept because I like PvEVP games and I think we could do with a game like this right now. But this is not it and it's not even close to being it at this point. Best case scenario, this game needs another six to nine months in the oven. The cynic in me thinks that Amazon pushed this out hoping to capitalize on the fact that we're all stuck at home at the moment. They probably dreamed of huge Apex Legends or Valorant size launch numbers because they thought that they had a captive audience. The difference was that those games were finished. Like Anthem, Crucible released well, well before it was ready and it's paid the price. My strong recommendation is for the dev team to take this game down. Change the name, by the way, because Crucible is Destiny. I'm sorry, but I can't even find this game anywhere on Google because when I type Crucible or YouTube or whatever, all I get is Destiny results. Change the name, it's ridiculous. Don't call it Crucible, call it something else. Take the game down, put it in closed alpha for like six or nine or 12 months. Focus on one game mode and make it sing and then re-release it when it's done. This is not done. Well, maybe it's done, but it's not finished and it's not worth your time. Don't play this at the moment, play other things, come back to this later on if it survives. Do you ever get those notifications on your phone that are like, hey, someone's trying to reset your password? Well, I do, and it's probably because I haven't been careful enough with my online data. In 2020, it's kind of like we can't really be lazy with our data anymore. Our online presence is a huge part of our lives. You wouldn't leave your house unlocked. You wouldn't leave your car unlocked. That's why you shouldn't leave your internet unlocked either. Surfshark VPN's technology encrypts your data, protecting you from identity thefts and hacks. They even have a dedicated hack lock system that scans various databases of leaked information and notifies you if your data turns up there. But if the security angle doesn't hook you, it also lets you access geo-blocked content, something that's particularly useful for me here in Australia, since we're kind of locked out of absolutely everything and our Netflix blows and all. So I basically just use Surfshark to bypass all that geo-blocked garbage and I can log into US Netflix instead. You can use Surfshark on multiple devices at once, which is something that almost no other VPN allows. It's available on pretty much every platform you can think of. It has 24 seven customer support and it has a full 30 day money back guarantee. Best of all, they're offering an 85% discount and three months free if you use offer code SKILLUP at checkout. Just click the link in the description below or visit surfshark.deals forward slash skillup. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring the video and thank you for watching it. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down so I know to do better for next time. If you enjoyed yourself, consider subscribing. And if you really enjoyed yourself, maybe consider hitting that notification bell so you never miss a video. You can see my patrons here on the left. They're awesome. They're amazing. If you want to join them, check out my Patreon page. Thank you again. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.